Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So what have I been up to? I have been continuing with um, the kitchen cupboard doors. Um, I've, got quite, <laughs> I've got quite a lot to do. I've got the drawers to do as well. So yeah, I've, I've just been uh, carrying on with that. Um, it's kind of losing its um, its appeal to us now. <laughs> I was actually enjoying it for some strange reason, but um, yeah, it's kind of losing its appeal to us now. I think that's probably because um, I've got other things I want to do um, and I'm itching to do, so it's probably why. So what impressed me... Um, so I've actually got two today. Um, so the first one would be a uh, Jackman Works posted a video, um, and this was uh, I think this might have been some sort of like in association with a uh, Rockler, and it was actually the the new spring loaded clamps. Um, I've never seen them, never heard of them before. I'm do believe these are um, it's like a patented idea or patent pending sort of thing um, <laughs> super cool really 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 cool so basically these things the, the, they're, a, they're a quick release clamp um, just your bog standard quick release clamp apart from the fact that the spring loaded meaning that um, as soon as you press the release button they'll actually spring together um this you know if you've if you use these on a regular basis uh, for different things you'll actually know it's quite it can be quite um what's the word i'm looking for it'd just be a pain in the arse basically um if you've if you're holding something up by yourself or you're holding two pieces of timber and you're trying to clamp them, especially if they're maybe above your head. He does actually demonstrate this uh, on the video. <laughs> the, the video is actually quite funny. You know, it's just uh, Jackman Works being Jackman Works, you know. Um, but it is actually quite funny. But um, I can see the I can see the want and the need for them. And to be honest with you, I probably will get some of them at some point in the future. But as I said, you know, they're actually, you know, they're, they're quite good. Um, you, you press the release button or uh, the spring button, I guess you could call it, and it's just going to spring together. You know, I, I'm sure everyone's done it where they've got some, like, like two pieces of wood or whatever they're going to clamp, and they haven't got it ready, and they haven't to, like, squeeze the trigger again and again and again and again to, you know, to basically move the clamp up here uh, so it takes a bite. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's really cool there uh, obviously i'll i'll leave a i'll leave a link in the description uh, if you want to check that out as i said i most likely will be buying some i do use clamps uh, quick release clamps i don't use them um a great deal but when i do use them i do i do like i do like to have a decent one at the moment i've only got like about two or three decent like clamps a uh, quick release clamps so I wouldn't actually, you know, I wouldn't actually mind paying the extra money, you know, providing that they're, they're a good all-around clamp. They're not just a, like a, you know, a bit of a gizmo, you know, that you use them and then the 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 break. So I've never had like a rock lock clamp before. Um, I don't actually know if you can get them in the UK, to be honest. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, so I am going to try and uh, get myself a couple of those. So, on to the next one. Um, I've just actually seen it. Um, I was going to leave it till next week, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and this is by uh, Lowly Mountain uh, Banjos. I've mentioned the guy before. Um, he's, he makes some beautiful uh, banjos. So, um, what I've just seen is actually... It looked to be like a bit of a form, and it's it's, it's quite ingenious. I was quite impressed when I seen it because, I, I, to be honest, I don't think I would have thought of this myself. Um, and as so, he's he's basically got a round form, and he's I think he steam bent some some timber, 
and he's as what he's done he's put the he's put the timber in inside of a circle if you will if it looks like he's it's he's been it's been cut out with a um, like a like a plywood and he's basically the 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 circle that he's the the, the circle that he's cut or the off cuts maybe uh, you'll have to correct us if I'm uh, if I'm wrong here Fred um, <laughs> if if you're listening that is um, but is what he's done he's got the two he's got the two uh, he's got the circle he's cut it in half and he's got the the wood inside of the inside of the the circle and the two semicircles he's actually just stuck stuck um like two or three wedges and it's actually pushing the timber against the form if that makes sense i hope i've explained that right it's it's so simple but it's it's ingenious at the same time i've never seen i've never seen that done before obviously i've seen I've seen wedges used in, um, you know, uh, steam bending for, you know, um, continuous uh, Windsor, Windsor armchairs, things like that. You know, I've seen quite a lot of that, uh, but I've never, I've never seen like an internal bend like that, if you will. And I, I thought that was quite uh, ingenious. So, of course, I'll leave a link. Um, go and check them out. Uh, Lonely Mountain Banjos. Uh, as I said, I'll leave a link for that. Okay, so today. I think I'm going to talk about. Well, I don't think I are. I actually am going to talk about um, the kitchen doors uh, that I've been making. I'm kind of just going to take you through the logic of it, um, how I've how I've done it. You know, you, you don't really. Well, at least I don't really hear about like people making kitchen doors by hand, like multiples. You know, I think like. I've made about seven and I've still got something to do. So it's something you don't really like hear or see. Um, And I think some people might find that a bit daunting. Like, you know, you know, like kind of, well, he's making all those doors with just like hand tools. It's going to take him ages and ages and ages. And to be honest, it hasn't, it hasn't really taken us too long. I mean, um, I think it took us about six hours to make two doors. Um, bearing in mind, I had multiple coffee breaks, and I was messing around with a camera because I did actually film this. I, I, I don't know whether I'm going to release the video or not. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Um, but yeah, so obviously messing around with you know moving the camera about and whatever else, and um, so that six hours really wasn't six hours maybe five hours to make two doors maybe a little bit less you know who, who knows you know when i do tend to take a coffee break it you know, it's quite a long coffee break uh, but yeah so it didn't take that long and you know in all fairness yeah so as i said i'm just going to kind of go through the logic and the setup and the whys and the hows and whatever else so um why did i do it because the doors I wanted, or the do- or the doors I've made, um, are like fifty five pound each. <laughs> so it's a lot of money, um, which uh, which I don't uh, I don't particularly want to pay. Um, to be honest, I think kitchen uh, doors or the the prices are charged for them. I think it's daylight robbery, um, especially. Especially when you're buying multiples of them, I personally think if you're going to buy multiples of them, you should get some sort of it, uh, discounts. But um, you know the likes of Wixes and the likes of B and Cube, I personally think they charge far too much money. Um, you know for what they sell, uh, especially the timber. But you know sometimes we are uh, forced, uh, not forced, but uh, let's let's just say we're. Our hands are our hands are tied sometimes, and you know we've got to go to places like that. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, so the material um, I went with uh, just some spruce. Um, I'm kind of not overly. 
keen on the spruce because it is it's really soft um it is really light though on on the plus side um which that's that's another thing i find that's wrong with um you know um kitchen cupboard doors or at least or at least the ones i've you know put it um hung or or whatever other ones i've i've dealt with you know over the years um the real in my experience the chipboard or the or mdf chipboard and mdf are pretty heavy especially when you compare it to the doors i've just made made from um spruce and the panels are made from six millimeter ply um so the doors themselves are like extremely light um i think this this is some of the problem with with the doors what i've seen and what i've heard over the years um it's not uncommon for the for the hinges the hinge section to be damaged um you know for for the door to be pulled off um or the door to come loose and like wiggle loose over time uh and i think that's a combination between the material that's used and obviously the weight of the doors that's my personal opinion i might be wrong i might be right just my opinion as i said so on a on a good note <clears throat> i think that it was kind of a good idea that way with the weight on the on the bad side of it uh, they are quite easy to damage and dent and things like that see i have actually made these doors before and i made them out of oak um they held up pretty well actually um you know all the all the joints were fine and everything um but the doors were heavy the doors were really 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 heavy um and obviously when they were closing as well uh you know they'd really slam you know obviously they've got <laughs> they've got a bit of weight you know and if you know if you kind of let go of it and the, and the slammed you were like you know um kind of you know you'd 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 get you'd get a fright basically like a really good fright um ironically i did actually put the slow closing um hinges on all the doors um i think i think it was a bit of a combination of there was a few faulty ones and the fact because these 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 were for me mom and I think it's the fact that she's 60 years old and she's been basically having to close a close a door by hand and she's kind of taught herself not to let it slam. So she would, I watched that time and time again, like basically close the door over. But because of the being slow close, she's actually pushing against it. So I think it was a combination of that. Basically, she was damaging the, you know, the piston section of the hinge and maybe a bit of a combination of um a few faults um from the manufacturer i kind of think it may be you know a bit of both so with the spruce you don't even if you kind of do let go and it does slam you don't get that you know it hasn't really got that much weight for you to you know really really slam and make a really loud noise yeah <laughs> which is quite good I do think maybe um, some European redwood would have been a lot better for it. Um, it is a little bit tougher. It's obviously still a soft wood, but it's not as soft as spruce, and I think it would have held up a little bit better. Um, but I didn't. I didn't have any. Um, I possibly could have got some, um, but kind of some of the logic behind the using the spruce as well is because i got it ripped to well it wasn't ripped to size it was already packaged to size so i went out and i bought like i think it was like a pack of four obviously i had to buy like a, several packs of four um but these these were like um i think 2.4 meters um by 70 millimeters in width and like 18 millimeters um in thickness so that was one of the that was one of the points that I made to go out to try and speed this up was to buy the thickness so I didn't have to um basically rip 
rip them to thickness and then you know clean the edges up when we play and it's you know it, it was something I didn't want to do and obviously I just wanted this you know to be quick so that was the log- kind of some of the logic behind why I did get the spruce obviously you know it was kind of you know to the size I wanted so the basic construction of the door is basically stub tenants um obviously you make a you make a groove um and I actually did make the groove I think the, what were the grooves I think the grooves were somewhere about 11 11 or 12 millimeters um so you had like a you had like a stub tenant um, obviously I left I left a little bit away from there yeah, I think I made the stub stub tenants about I think it was about 11 millimeters I give myself about a mi- like a millimeter play um so there's a there's a there's a lot of people that would think or dismiss um, stub tenants. So this is the second time I've used stub tenants. Sorry, the third time I've used stub tenants, and I have not had an issue. Um, currently, the cupboard doors I'm replacing, none of those stub tenants like failed. Um, obviously, I've just I've just took them. Um, those doors apart um you know and i've had to like saw them and, and hammer them apart basically um you know so it, it it just go it does go to show the you know stub tenants you know they're not they're not um what, what's the word i'm looking for they're not useless um obviously the construction of the door the engineering of the door obviously helps as well because you've got the frame and you've got the panel inside the frame. If the frame wasn't in there, you know, I've got I've got no doubts. There's no doubt that the you know the stub, the stub tenants probably would fail quite quickly. But obviously, the way it's it's kind of engineered, it's you're you're obviously using the panel. The panel um, the frame gets a strength from the panel, which you know works. Everything works together basically. Okay, so. Um, for me this was one of the most important things um and this gives us the most accuracy and it helps to speed the things the like the, the whole build up so it was a tool it was a tool set up um specifically it was the plow plane set up and the mortar gauge set up so Anyone that wants to do this, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you take your time and you go over it two, three, four, five, take however many times you need to to make sure that that's, that mortise gauge is set up correctly um, so it's centralised and you've got the right size for the blade that you're going to be using in your plow plane and also that coincides with the material you're using so in my case it was like um i think the correct measurement for it was like um 5.5 millimeter ply i think that was a correct um, measurement so i used um quarter of an inch so the quarter of an inch is is slightly slightly less than six millimeters um so that's what i used so it did give it a there was a little bit of play there um but kind of that's that's the size of the blade i used so as i said in my mortise gauge i can basically push the two points together um and th- this is basically an old marbles wooden gauge this um with a with a thumb screw on it um and obviously it's got it's got one of the one of the points is um able to to move up and down and this gets locked into place with the thumb screw and it also locks the head into place as well so when I push the two points together, obviously one of the points is fixed and it doesn't move at all. And obviously you've got the one that moves. So when I push them two together, it is pretty much perfectly quarter of an inch. So with with us knowing that, I've just got to push that together. Um, I basically eyeball um, the gauge, yeah, the, the the head of the gauge, uh, and give it give it a little nip. 
and basically I'll see where it is um, on the, on the thickness of the material. So I'll make an imprint with the two dots, and then I'll turn I'll turn the the gauge around so the the body or the face, sorry, the head is actually making contact with the other the, the opposite the opposite face. Um, and I'll do a I'll do another indent um, with the two points. So basically, at this point, <laughs> um, there's going to be four points, uh, unless you get it perfect. Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So there's going to be there's going to be four points, and this basically tells you that. Um, it's not centralized correctly so now you've got the four points is what you need to do now is basically line line the two line your two your two end um, points in between the four indentations so you've got two on one side and two on the opposite side so you basically need to get into the middle of the last side of those and once you do that you should be quite close um to to being centralized basically um and it's pretty much the same sort of thing um with the plow plane um get yourself a scrap piece of wood and just keep on going from one side to the other side one side to the other side and you know as i said with these two make sure you really really take your time especially if you do multiples of them because if you do if you take your time now and you get everything set correctly you know as close as you can it's just going to make mul mul multiple like builds you're basically doing the same task you're going to get the same results so it stands to reason that you should really take your time and set the tools up correctly um so basically once you've done that and you've took your time you're laughing basically so the the point of the um, mortis gauge is basically to stop any tear out. Um, it is quite common um, when you're using a plow plane um, for you to basically rip out some of the grain that you're not cutting. So if you use a mortis gauge and you take it down the full length of the piece of uh, material that you're using, um, it's going to it's it's gonna um what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna be a lot harder for the for the plow plane to rip out um the material um that you don't want to rip out basically because you've you've scored the wood with the two points. So something to point out here as well is that when you when you are actually um marking marking out using your using your gauge you should use the same the same face side so basically what what i got taught and what i would recommend is actually doing a face mark with the pencil face mark um a couple of times down the piece of timber so basically this this is just going to identify the registration face that you've used to mark out with with your mort with your mortis gauge um and it's also going to um give you the the registration face for the um the plow plane you know to put your to, to, that's going to be like this the the face side that you register your fence against so if there is any discrepancies everything should be pretty you know everything's going to be the same basically um there shouldn't be no you know let's just say for instance i'm going to exaggerate chair a little bit because if you've took your time you shouldn't be this far out you shouldn't be any you, sh you know you shouldn't be a millimeter or or 1.5 uh, 1 1.5 or 2 millimeters out you shouldn't be anywhere in your land if you've took your time to set up which i really recommend you do but let's just say you are for argument's sake just say let's just say you're two millimeters out so if you don't mark the sides and you start putting the thing the gala and you get your and you get your thing and you get everything mixed up um and you're gluing things together and because you're slightly off center say by one millimeter or two millimeters you're going to see that when you start putting things together 
um, you know, dep depending depending on how vigilant you are when you're actually putting the sticker out, when you're gluing things up, you might notice it, you might not notice it. And if you don't notice it, <laughs> you're going to end up with big steps in it. Um, you know, so you kind of don't want to do things like that. And for the sake of doing a couple of pencil marks, face marks, you know, it's kind of worth doing and it's not it's not a big issue to do that so when when i'm actually using the plow plane i won't actually cut things to length so obviously when you when you're making the doors you've got your two styles and you've got your two rails so you know you've got your left and your right styles and you've got your top rail and your bottom rail so um for instance um i might have a door to say it's oh, I, forget, I forget the height of them now i think with somewhere the the wall units were i think the doors were in the region of 715 millimeters somewhere around there so if i was to do one style by itself that ain't too much of an issue um but if if I'm doing a short door, say maybe the t the total size, the total width of the door when it's constructed is three hundred millimeters, um, it can be a little bit tricky and problematic. Um, so if you can imagine, you've got a door at three hundred millimeters in width minus the two styles at seventy millimeters each. That's like we're taking away 140 millimeters so you're not left with a great deal so you know when you've for a start um it can be a little bit awkward to clamp something up that short um and i do actually try to do this with a lot of things if i am ha like handling something that is short or, or working with something that's short I try to leave it as long as possible. I've reiterated this so many times. Um, it just makes life so much easier. If you can leave it as long as possible for as long as possible, um, it's it's just easier to clamp. Um, well, are you using clamps, even a vice, even if you're using a vice, um, and certainly if you're using whole fasts and you're using uh, the pegs. So with things like this i left them as long as possible so what i've actually been doing i've actually been making two doors at a time so i'll i'll, I'll actually make the components um you know like two doors worth at a time and obviously i'll glue them together one at a time you know like i i'll i'll make the, like the components um like obviously two doors worth at a time um, and as I've just said, I'll glue them together. You know, I, like once I've got the components, I'll just then I concentrate on working on one door. And what and one of the one of the reasons is because obviously if I've got the little short rails, you know, that are less than three hundred millimeters, you know, I can actually basically have the four of them together plus a little bit extra. Uh, and as I said, it's just easier to work with. It's easier to clamp them. So. I've also just said there a little bit extra. So the reason for this is um, when when you start your playing off, or at least when I started off, um, no matter how careful I am, for some reason, um, occasionally I kind of veer off, and it's it's always it's always just at the end. I never do this midway or quarter way or or even at the far end. It's always it's always at the um, at the start of the cut. So the the reason I leave that little bit extra is because when I veer off a little bit, or that's another thing that tends to happen, or at least it does tend to happen with me um, at the start of the cut or roll I'm making a groove it tends to get it tends to be like slightly wider this this might only be like you know it's silly it might only be somewhere in the region of like 20 millimeters or, or 30 millimeters and then after that it just seems to 
it seems to correct itself or all are are corrected um clearly i'm doing something wrong it's you know the way i'm 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 working but for the sake of 20 to 30 millimeters i can kind of live with that um it's probably the speed i do it at um you know kind of just wanting to get you know to get the task done but what i find if i do allow that little bit extra i am actually able to pick the speed up um so yeah leave a little bit extra on both sides you know even maybe you know allow for some in the center as well you know if you've got multiple components together you know you can mark these out i'm not talking about you know like adding a meter you don't need to add an extra meter to it but you know you know maybe i don't know you know maybe add like a hundred hundred millimeters 150 millimeters in total maybe you know there's obviously you know it might be it might be different to to, to to what you're doing i don't know the circumstances but for me what i've been doing is maybe adding like maybe 100 millimeters so another thing while i'm using the plow plane um i concentrate on keeping the fence like hard up to the face um I, I don't really concern myself with um like looking on top to see to see where the um you know how it's cutting i do but i do tend to tend to keep my eye on the fence in the face and i try to make sure that's making contact all the time um because that's the crucial part keeping that fence um together uh sorry keeping the keep, keeping the fence of the plow plane and the face of the timber where you're cutting the groove you want good contact you don't want any sort of um gap there because if you end up with some sort of gap there it means your grooves come offline you've come you've come off your you know away from your um your mortis your mortis lines basically um and obviously that can cause you prob problems <laughs> it obviously depends on how much you veer off <laughs> um but i do make a point in you know i might i might even put a little bit of extra force um with my left hand to make sure that fence is making good solid contact um i will say as well that the fence actually on the plow plane and uh, this is a lubin uh, plow plane you can get these from uh, woodwork in heaven um for some reason in america i believe you have trouble getting them you can't actually buy them and i don't think i don't think the likes of like um veritas or or rock well not veritas but uh, the, the, rockla maybe or i'm not too sure where you guys get your your hand tools from but i don't know there's some sort of issue and you can't send them from america uh, sorry you can't send them from the uk to america i don't know if it's just north america or i don't know if south america allows it i'm i'm not overly sure but there is some sort of issue with that um i don't know why because it is <laughs> there is demand for it because i've had i've had like a i've uh, maybe half a dozen um guys from america you know asking about it and asking where where, where they can get it from basically so you know the, there is you know there is a market for it so you know I, I, I can only imagine why they haven't you know picked up on this uh, the companies so the fence, uh, the fence that I actually got with the the Lubin plane, um, I don't know what type of wood it is, um, but you know it's it's quite a quite a decent hardware and wood, whatever it is. But the thing about it is, it's actually quite a, uh, it's not a massive fence, but it's just a nice size. It allows you to keep good contact with the face um i just think it's it, it's the proportion of it's in proportion to the size of the plane itself it just it goes well together i think i think the i think the, the overall size of the fence has been well thought out um and it works really really well and obviously this comes supplied with the fence that i didn't fit this 
Um, and to be honest with you, if I if I need to get another fence, I don't think I'd ever change it. I would stick with the same size. I would take the measurements, get a good piece of wood, and and replace it uh, repl- exactly the same way. Um, so. If you've got a plow plane and you haven't got a decent fence on it, um, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you can mount a bit of a like a wooden fence on it, I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, I can't really give you a size. I'm thinking maybe the width of it, maybe about like 30 millimetres, somewhere in that region. Um, I can't really give you the length either. I mean maybe 140 millimeters 150 millimeters but obviously different um, plow planes are going to be different but i would really recommend um getting a you know a, a decent size fence on it um and i do believe because i've got that fence on it it does it does help you to get that accuracy because when you when i'm using it uh, or all after I've used it, I can look in the I can look in the groove itself, and you can just see the squareness of it. You know, even if I've been a, a bit hasty, you know, I've rushed it a bit, you know, and it's not the neatest of grooves on the inside. You can still see it's still a relatively square. And that's even when I've been careless and I've been rushing with it. So you know, as I said. You know, if you haven't got a fence on, because I did actually get a few questions about it in a few comments. You know, basically, I think there was one guy that says I'm struggling to get like you know the square, like squareness, because he was you know he was asking what type of plane it was, and yeah, I think someone else asked you know did I put the fence on myself? But as I said, I think if you get a decent fence on a, de- a decent thickness. Um, not thickness, a, a decent width for all that, um, it's really going to help you out. So, once I've done all the grooves, um, I basically, I'll put the plow plane to one side. So, something else that I didn't mention and what I, what I will mention now is that while I'm using the plow plane and while I'm using the... Um, the mortise gauge as well obviously i've got i've got multiple doors to do so when i'm when i'm using them i will periodically retighten them um you know obviously i don't go crazy and you know trying to snap the thing but i will make sure everything's you know tight um all the screws are tight so all the thumb screws are tight um because basically i don't want their measurements to move because all the materials are the same so obviously there will be a little bit of discrepancy in the material but you know for the for the vast majority it should be quite close to to each other so um you know that's kind of i just thought i would mention that just periodically if you are doing like you know multiple doors or whatever you know just it's not going to hurt just to make sure everything's loose because sometimes when you are using the tools um i have had it in the past you know i've been using gauges and you know it's it's just come loose you know through using it and you know it it being knocked or, or whatever else that can come loose so it's just something to pay attention to when you are using the tools um as i said i've i set that thing up once uh, I set, sorry, I set the two tools up once, and I haven't, and I haven't touched, and I haven't touched the adjustments again. Um, all other than just to make sure they're tight, and I haven't had an issue. You know, it, it you could kind of look at it the same way as if you were to use, uh, you know, like a table saw. Once you've got, if you take the time to set that table saw up, you know, all your cuts are just going to be exactly the same, kind of the same sort of principle here. So just just something you know to note okay so stub tenants um so i did have multiple doors to do i did have multiple sizes to do um so the the widths of the doors there was 300 there was 400 millimeters 500 millimeters 600 millimeters um and there was a 
552 of those doors as well. Um, that was a bit of a custom cupboard I'd made years previous uh, just to fit into a space. Um, so rather than <laughs> rather than baffle myself, um, what I would do with these basically for the two styles. I knew I knew the I knew the height of those that wasn't an issue so I would actually cut those so I had my styles to the right length for my for my rails as I as I said just so I didn't baffle my head because it's just so easy for me to get confused what I done I actually I cut one of the I cut one of the uh, sorry I cut one of the tenants one of the stub tenons, um, and I got the two styles. I put the two styles together, um, you know, faces down, put them together, and I put the stub tenons, fitted it in, into one of the grooves, and from the outside, I measured the total distance, what I needed. So if it was 300 millimetres off, let's let's say 300 millimetres for argument's sake, I would measure 300 millimetres, so that would mean I, ha I would have two of the sails put together, and then I would have one of the rails fitted with the tenons actually fitted inside, um, in place. Um, then I would measure my 300 there, and then I would add an extra 10 or 11 millimetres, and that was for the... That was for the stub tenants, and that's how I got my sizes. Rather than trying to work things out, <laughs> I just thought it was a lot easier. And obviously, once I've got that size, I just write it down. Um, you know, and job done. There's, you know, there's no complicated, um, you know, working sizes out. There's probably a lot of people now saying what's complicated about working the sizes out for a style. Um, silly little things like that can like really confuse me so i just find that really easy to do that um once i'd done that i was then able to pencil line the length the total length including the tenants of each rail and i was also able to put in the shoulder lines so I put the shoulder the shoulder lines in with a knife. Basically, I made a knife all the way a knife wall all the way around, and then I was able to get the next the next section or the other or the other rail roller, um, line it up, do the pencil lines, and then uh, the you know once it's lined up, I was able to do the um, the shoulder lines. So. When, when I'm actually cutting the rails, um, and also um, the styles, when I was cutting them to length, I was using pencil lines, and I was just cutting it with a saw, with my Japanese saw. So, the Japanese saw I was actually using, um, it's it's more for um, um, cabinetry, you know. So it's the blade itself is quite fine. I think it's like zero point four five of a millimetre. You know, so the the teeth are very finely set, and um, you get a nice smooth cut. So th th that's the reason I was using pencil lines. So the key with this, or the trick with this roller, and it's the same with anything like this, is that you make sure the shoulder lines meet up. The ac the accuracy is in the shoulder lines rather than the stub tenons. Uh, sorry, the end of the stub tenants, the shoulder line is what 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 really matters, because that's going to give you you know the distance at the top rail and the distance at the bottom rail. You need those shoulders to be in line because that's that's where it's going to connect. You know, so if one if one's slightly out, it's not going to be ninety degrees. So uh, as I said it doesn't matter it, it obviously it does matter with your tenant because of your tenants if if the 
if the tenon itself's too long it's not going to fit but more for the accuracy you you, you want to be concentrating more on the shoulder line and as i said if you get the, sh the shoulder lines right you know you're going to get really good results with that so once those were marked out um i then went and got me um my mortise gauge my mortise gauge is already set up so scribe the line rounds put the pencil in um and then i just paid this down with my chisel it it literally took us like 30 seconds to pay this down there's not a lot of material to to use <laughs> sorry i tell a lie i'm jumping ahead of myself here i actually cut the shoulder lines first um the the knife walls first and i've done this with me flush me flush trim so um i've thought about this a couple of times this is what i've been using um, to do like little fine joints like that because the blade's just so fine um so once I'd done that, then I would pair it down with the um, with my chisel. So I would get quite close to the line, um, and then I would finish up with um, my mortise gauge, and uh, not my mortise gauge, my my router plane. Sorry, um, but I would still leave the pencil line ever so slightly on, or, or all of the the gauge line ever so slightly and um, do exactly the same with the opposite side um, and then just try the fit um, and I would just go backwards I would I would flip it take a little bit off flip it again to the other face take a little bit more off and I would just keep on trying the fit trying the fit and trying the fit um, it's actually quite quick when you do this as well um, it doesn't really take you too long to cut a, a stub tenant. Um So, obviously, when you are cutting these stub tenants, you do want to make sure you are getting a nice snug fit. Um, <laughs> obviously, you don't want it to be loose, especially with it being a stub tenant because there's not a lot of material for it to hold on you know like as i said i was like like 10 11 millimeters so that needed to be a nice snug fit um i'm not talking about overly tight you know but as i said what i was aiming for was to basically basically be able to put it in you know and i would be able to pick the the part one of the one of the parts up and it would support the other parts you know without it falling out that's kind of what i was looking for I wasn't looking for anything tighter than that, and I wasn't looking for anything um, loose, looser than that. So once I was happy with all the, the stub tenants, um, bearing in mind, I did actually <laughs> I did actually screw up on one of the tenants. I was I was being a little bit lazy, and I over i over cut the tenants so as what i actually done the next tenants that i actually cut i took the time when i was pairing it and paired it and paired it along ever so like um slowly um and i was able to take off the the full um uh, the full length of the of the cheek if you will so i basically turned the cheek round to the flat side the the face side that was facing me um applied some glue and i actually glued that back onto the tenant that was a bit short and then i was able to um you know pair it back down again so that was quite a simple um fix but it could have been avoided if i wasn't being so lazy so it is best to just check and check and recheck your fit as you're pairing down uh, where you're out playing so um i did actually put an internal um bevel on these uh, sorry not a bevel a chamfer um i've done this with my 101 apron plane my little lufas plane uh, one of my favorite planes um and i did actually um do a couple of reels on instagram i think I should, they'll be on facebook as well um just showing you how quick i was able to do these and they're actually quite accurate because i'm using uh, everyone i do i'm kind of using the same set like i'm i'm putting it against pegs 
and I'm using like obviously the same body mechanics everything's the same I'm using the same amounts of strokes it was like eight strokes um to create the bevel that I wanted and I thought that's and I've done that with all of them and all of the you'd be you'd be really surprised at how consistent they are um on the shoulders because that did call for a um uh, bevel on the shoulders the plane was a little bit too big even though it's so small but it was a little bit too big to actually get in um, it was actually hitting the uh, stub tenant so I basically had to um, use my chisel um, so I pulled the pencil line down you know and I, and I took my chisel and I'd, I'd actually done a a reel for that so if you want to check those out you know there's links in the description um you know to all my social media so next i cut uh, the panel out uh, basically you know just measured allowed myself a little bit of play in the panel and um you know cut it out basically nothing you know nothing hard about it um made sure everything fits i done a i done a dry fit i done a i do a dry fit with all the doors i've made um it's just really better to be safe than sorry um you don't want to you know be out a, cu- a couple of millimeters or whatever or you know it being too short and then you know you've got the glue in place and then you put the thing together and then you realize <laughs> you realize something's amiss um, you know when the glue starts to grab especially if it's a nice snug fit as well the joints are nice and snug because um, sometimes the uh, PVA glue can like really grab the material like a lot quicker you know it's funny because sometimes I see with PVA glue um, you know do not move the piece for at least an hour and then do not and then like do not stress the joint for at least 24 hours you know in the past I've you know, I've 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 basically glued things up um half an hour and I've realised I've basically screwed up and I've tried to take the thing apart and I couldn't take the thing apart to the point where I've actually tried to break the joint and it's just pulled the wood fi- the wood fibre apart. So the joints it hasn't broken, the joint it's broke like beyond the joint. You know, so you have got to be careful because sometimes as I said, that PVA glue PVA glue can grab really quickly. So basically, I glued it together. Um, I did. I wasn't going to, but I decided to um, actually put some glue in the grooves. So I technically glued the panel, the the panel in place. So there'll be a lot of people that say you shouldn't have done that to allow for expansion and wood movements and totally agree with you and i have done this and i normally always do do this <laughs> um at least if i'm doing it with um you know the likes of oak or, or like a full like you know like a hardwood panel but with this being ply i thought to myself yeah it's going to move but the movement's going to be you know minuscule um so i did actually dab some glue in it I, don't get us wrong it's it wasn't a lot of glue it's basically you know if you can imagine like uh, how best to describe it like a like like a, a pearl trail shall we say um so you know it's not a full it's not a full bean of glue so i kind of think if it needs to move which i don't think it's going to move a great deal but if it does need to it should still be able to do that that was kind of the theory behind it but i also thought that if i did use the glue and glue the panel in that it was just it was just going to add so like so much strength to it um not that it really would have needed it yeah considering the last the last doors you know survived however many years it might be like five six seven years you know they were still fine as i said i i've just had to break them apart saw them apart then hammer them apart yeah, um, basically, they're getting burnt now. <laughs> they're in my log burner as we speak. Well, some of them are anyway. So, um, I clamped these up. I stuck two clamps on them, um, and then I just let the thing dry. Um, 
you know, obviously wiped out any uh, glue, um, excess glue, which uh, there wasn't a great deal. Um, I only, <laughs> ironically, I only, I only clamped up two of them. Um, I can't remember the first one. I clamped up just because I always clamp doors up. Um, and then I think the next door I didn't bother clamping up. The next door after that, and the next door after that I didn't bother clamping up. I basically just got them, you know, and lay them flat on the ground. Um, I was happy with how the joints were, um, and I just let them dry, didn't disturb them, and I let them dry overnight. Um, I think I had to, I think I had to glue one. Uh, sorry, not glue one. I think I had to clamp another one after that. Uh, I forget the reason. There was I had to pull the joint together. I think there was a bit of a bow. That's like a, like a bit of a slight bow in the um, in the material. Something like I can't quite remember now. But there was a reason. So, but all the rest of them, as I said, I didn't I didn't bother uh, clamping up, um, which a lot again a lot of people may find a bit strange, but. I just thought I would mention that because sometimes you can actually get away with not using clamps. It's not very often you can, but, you know, sometimes you can. Um, so let, let, I let them dry and then basically uh, just finished them off. So the tops, the top and the bottom rail, uh, you know, there was a bit of a step in that, took the plane across that, made them nice and flush, the two uh, styles, uh, top and bottom, um, and then basically put a, you know, took the arras off all the way around. I wouldn't quite say it was a chamfer, but it, it was a sl- it was a bit more than taking the arras off. Um, give the thing a sand down, um, and then I just marked the positions for the handles, um, and um, obviously for the hinges. And then I sprayed the thing so. Same again, I haven't got no expensive spraying kits. This was out of a can. Um, and I actually done this in my kitchen. <laughs> if you can believe it. Um, yeah, I am that nuts. Um, I actually actually put a dust sheet down. I got it. I got me, <laughs> I got me coffee table. This is my own coffee table. This is how nuts I am. You know, I got my own coffee table, and I put that. I did actually, obviously, cover it up, um, and I decided to spray it in my kitchen, um, more to the backside. And the reason for this was because I was supposed to be going back to work, and me poor mother, uh, you know, I didn't want to leave her without any, um, you know, cabinet doors or unpainted cabinet doors um so i decided you know to kind of get the ones i'd made done and then i could put them back because it was because i obviously i took i took some away with us um and there was actually a couple of uh, damaged as well so i took them away with us and i didn't want to leave it you know at least there might you know there might be a, a mismatching color but at least i could put them back on you know and she, you know she wouldn't have like doorless cupboards basically so i kind of done that because i was supposed to be going back to work and the weather outside was absolutely atrocious uh, we've just had another storm in the northeast of england i forget the name of the storm now uh, but yeah so i basically couldn't do anything outside like like spray wise so i kind of decided to do that and anyone that's ever sprayed a uh, Obviously, the over spray it went absolutely everywhere. <laughs> it's like on me benches, me like me worktops. Yeah, it just absolutely went everywhere. But like the logic in my mind was that it kind of wasn't gonna. It was just gonna stay in that area, and you know I was fine with that, and I was gonna you know cover that area. I was gonna like obviously clean that area up. I mean, on the plus side. You know, I, I, I obviously realise, you know, the over spray would just settle like dust and that's kind of what it does. Um, so, you know, I, I was under no illusion, you know, it wasn't going to like, you know, stick to the floors or the walls or anything like that. But, um, yeah, it went absolutely everywhere. So I did get some some, some spray. I, ironically, 
um, I'm not actually going to work. Uh, it, it got delayed because because of the storm, so that got put back. So I'm I'm yet to go to work. <laughs> um, so I didn't kind of need to do that. And again, same again today. Ironically, it's been quite nice outside. Um, you know, so I could have done it today, but hey ho, you know, it's it's kind of done now. Um, what I will say about the spray though. Um, I did get quite a good result, um, but it does highlight all the little imperfections and meaning that when I did get the wood, I did actually clean it up with me smoothing plane. Um, but because I'm blind as a bat, and also because there was some tear out in the wood, um, not caused by myself, this was um, done with the machines. Um, that actually planed the material. Um, I'm guessing that the blades were probably very dull and they needed changing or sharpens. Um, so there was there was a little bit of tear. Although I did remove quite a lot of the tear, but some of it was raw that deep. Um, I didn't think it would be too much of an issue, but um, obviously with it being painted, it's 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 probably satin it's not a gloss but it is a satin but it does it does highlight it so there's like you know you, there is a couple of them where you can see the you know the tear out so i do think i'm gonna have to um give them a little bit of sand maybe fill them with a little bit of cork and then have to respray resp those doors uh so that might be something for you to um you know note if you're going to do something like this you know um i should really wear my glasses when i'm you know when i'm checking because me my eyes are, the ironic thing about it is my eyes are so bad that i feel the need to check the work so i do check the work but because my eyes are so bad i do miss things like that or in this case i did actually think it wouldn't be as bad as what it looks you know and i didn't really want to take any more off because then i was thinning in the material a bit too much um but i think it was a kind of a combination between the two of them so yeah kind of you know anything like that you know try and um you know try and spot things or, or maybe fill it beforehand you know i never even thought about filling it beforehand i could have done that but you know that's me i'm a little silly sometimes um so i'm gonna call it um i've been raving on for like such a long time now so um again thanks very much for listening and thank you very much again i see I've, i'm seeing this every week now it's like i'm getting so many new followers on um facebook and on instagram it's like crazy it's like just so many so thanks to everyone that's you know taking the time to comment followers and liking all the videos and the, the reels i'm doing and the posts i'm doing really really appreciate it and until the next time i shall speak to you guys later